I'm not sure how many fishermen are out there humble enough to post a video of themselves struggling on the water all day. But I'm humble enough to do it. Maybe it's not humble. Maybe I'm just stupid. But anyway, I think you still learn a thing or two if you're interested in fishing Lake Michigan per se. But enjoy watching me struggle. I'm going to test myself today on Southern Lake Michigan. I love Southern Lake Michigan and it's not heavily fished, but it's got some monster small mouth. It's actually got some real good large mouth fish you find in the right areas. I'm not going to spend much time on the main lake. In fact, I got a couple of uh, spots on the, in the, I'm launching right now in a creek. As you can see, get ready to head out to the big lake. But I'm going to fish some marinas and pierheads, things of that nature. Try to get a mix of large mouth and small mouth today. Uh, I'm in a really fun area, really fun spot. Got a lot of history here. Won quite a bit of money in this particular area. Thanks to my good buddy Phil Strakowski years ago showed this to me. And due to out of respect to Phil, I'm not going to tell you where I am, but I suspect some of you will be able to figure it out as I fish today. And hopefully, I'll show you exactly what I do out here to, to catch some large mouth and small mouth. And have a great time. So in Southern Lake Michigan, it's been ridiculously hot lately. I mean ridiculously. It's I'm on September 25th today, and it's typically highs in the upper 60s, but it's been nearly 90 degrees for the past week and a half. Uh, I think the fish are all messed up a little bit, but the water temp in here is 72 degrees. I'm just a stone throw away from the actual lake, Lake Michigan. This water should be in the 60s uh, at best. So I'm not sure what we're going to find today. Normally we are in some really good fishing territory here, and I'm sure we're going to find some, but it might be a bit of a struggle than normal. Buddy. A second. Just had two short strikes on it. Just threw a tube in there twice. Each time it got nailed with something. First one I was just extremely late on the cast. On a hook set, excuse me. More bloopers with Andy right there. Much as I wish they'd jump in a the boat, they're not going to. I have to work today. Uh oh, here we go. We got a smallmouth. Nope, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's a large mouth. Call a giant a large mouth. Let me tell you what I just did there. I just made my very first cast of this bait. See, I fished, loved it. it ripped it right off. So I'm throwing a Loch Ness Lures Punch Monkey in the green pumpkin magic color. Very first cast of that. I got it paired up with a quarter ounce. Jig head. My boat was about to hit there. It was literally my first cast of that thing. It's, a, it's an eerie darter looking bait. Much thicker head, much better plastic. Much better plastic. It's soft and yet durable. That was my very first cast of that bait. Caught my first fish of the day. First cast, my first fish. Let's try to make that like 20 more. Exactly how I got it set up.
much monkey. It's really not the size we're after, but it is a bit of a bit of action on a Monday morning. There's more play with that. to do I'm literally looking at you can see my background when I'm fishing and I'm up against one I'm literally seeing two dozen or more uh -oh. well that's about all I can hook or my is a rock down there I'm literally seeing two dozen or more smallmouth and largemouth mixed in I'm not seeing any giants but man they're mostly I'd say a pound and a half to three pounds just just cruising and uh, boy, I've thrown a kitchen sink at them so far and haven't gotten a bite, but I got more time. The, the, their, their problem is I now know where they are, so, and I got some time. So I put my punch monkey on a drop shot rig, and I'm, you can see I'm casting up against this break wall, and I'm trying to keep my bait right on the edge, because the vast majority of these fish you catch out here are right up against a wall of some sort, eating on gobies. And for whatever reason, the bite is not good today, but I think the water temperature is too warm. You know, I'm over 70 and a half degrees, and this is, this is Lake Michigan here, and it, it shouldn't be this warm. But we'll keep plugging at them. <laughs> well, there's one bait that's produced the whole time. Well, the only bait that's produced is this punch monkey. Well, I'll keep throwing it. out here pretty soon I'm gonna be fishing in my underwear so there's your warning this will not be a good view I'm back where I found those smallmouth cruising on those rocks on this break wall earlier I got a whole bunch there there's a mixture of those smallmouth with a bunch of big shad and there's a couple largemouth in there too I couldn't get a single one of them to bite earlier So I'm trying a little bit more of a finesse presentation with a finesse black worm on a drop shot. I wish I had a black bucktail jig, real small one, but I don't have any because I think that would be the best bait to use for something just like this. These fish out here, so much of them eat gobies. Gobies is their diet 95% of the time. They'll certainly eat some alewives and bait fish as if it becomes available. Uh, and I believe right now, I mean, it's September 25th, these fish should be ready to start munching and getting fat for the winter, but you look at 71 degree water right here. And I believe these fish are just waiting, waiting to do something, waiting to have, I say do something, I mean the weather to do something, to get them really aggressive and eating. 
it's this calm on September 25th on Lake Michigan. This is, this is insane. I'm looking at a beach, got people out there uh, laying out. And that really shouldn't be happening. People should be walking around with hoodies and pants. Here I am in shorts and t-shirt. I am, I'm burning up. I'm looking right at them. And quite a few shad, smallmouth bass swimming around there right on top of these rocks. So calm, they're not hard to fit to, to uh, differentiate. You can see the, the tails on the shad, and then the brown of the smallmouth. And boy, oh boy, I just had a, that. That's probably a four pounder. I just swam right by my bait. I dropped right on top of it, and uh, all he did was swim off. The word of the day was definitely disappointing. I'm really disappointed. Uh, I've got a fairly good history out here, and uh, hey, I, I, I know what I'm doing, but it sure didn't show it today as the video showed you. I didn't catch a lot of fish. Uh, I saw some quality fish, gonna give them the bite. If, if uh, you know, like any great fisherman, I got a whole host of excuses to blame the weather for the most part. It is bluebird skies and overcast, 90 degrees, and it's very abnormally hot for this time of year. Uh, I think. I think those fish were waiting for a little bit of colder water. Now, with that said, to make today work, I, I think I would have had to run a lot. Run a lot more, 20 miles one direction, other, 30 miles every direction, and so forth, and, and hit a lot of different areas. But, if you can take anything from this video, I've been asked countless times over the years how to fish Southern Lake Michigan. If you just look at the types of spots that I was fishing, those types of spots hold fish. Keep your bait as close to the walls as you can. 95% of these fish, their diet, they are gobies. So even uh, some crankbaits today, even them are painted brown. Uh, I get them cu custom painted by TC Custom Lures, a goby color. And that's produced out here as well. Sometimes the chartreuse spinner baits are a really good bet. But other than that, I'm throwing uh, baits that mimic the gobies out here, which are predominantly brown. Luckily, I didn't get too hot. I didn't have to strip down my underwear. But I'm ready to get off the water and grab a cold water and uh, get us some air conditioning. Like Michigan, people don't realize so much of it is current and current related and current based. There's a lot of current going through the Great Lakes. People fish St. Clair, Erie know that as well. No different here in Lake Michigan. Uh, wind has a huge impact as well. It, wind can fluctuate water levels two to three foot in a day or in a matter of hours, believe it or not. But really, if you looked at the spots I was fishing and focusing on, everything had something in common. They're all current based. Rather, they were points that were that the current was blowing into, rolling into, or they were eddies behind the points, or rocks, or something out there on the lake that had current going through. Everything's current related. So